The underlying philosophy of the World Islamic Economic Foundation is to build bridges through business, a belief that greater interaction and trade between Muslim nations can spur development and create business opportunities. I caught up with the chairman of the foundation, Musa Hitam, to find out more. No single group in the world could advance itself by itself, within itself, except to connect with the rest of the world. The uniqueness of the World Islamic Economic Forum is that while it does call itself Islamic and that the core group of it are mostly made up of Muslim business people, but the fact is that we recognize that without connecting with the rest of the world and putting aside the differences in religious beliefs, could we get together and identify projects, businesses, investment opportunities, trade and development overall collectively together. The theme of the forum is gearing for economic resurgence. As the global economy recovers, you fear that some of the Muslim developing countries might be left behind. Uh, what action can be taken for them to defend themselves? Many of those countries and groups, they had never been on the screen, so to speak. In other words, the marginalized and forgotten groups have the opportunity to come here. And we consciously want to encourage them to use the channel of the World Islamic Economic Forum to get in touch and in contact and to start networking and learning uh, from others more developed. Now, giving them the opportunity actually means opening doors to them, which gives them an opportunity to not only promote themselves as best possible, not as the most advanced, but the country or the area that needs most investments. With the anemic growth in the West and the sort of economic gravity shift uh, to the East that we are seeing, and especially maybe even this growth corridor across what you could call the, the new silk road from, from Africa into the Middle East, into Central Asia, down to Southeast Asia, doesn't this create opportunities for enhanced interaction, for enhanced trade within Muslim nations? Definitely, definitely. Um, if you look at the pattern of geographical movement, if you like. There's so much now moving towards this part of the world, no doubt about it. But mind you, again, while we call ourselves Muslim business people, we take the opportunity of this flow to engage everybody. China, we talk about India, we talk about uh, Thailand, for example, Vietnam, for example, the potential is tremendous. And this is what the WIF is all about. We get them to come here each time we have our event and engage them, provide them an opportunity uh, to facilitate for them to get together and identify and go on with doing business. So our business is business. And in order to facilitate that, we talk about bridging, bridging the gap, so to speak, through business. This is what we are all about. Finally, let's just discuss the potential of the Muslim market and specifically the key industries, halal and Islamic finance. I've said this ever so many times. If you look at the population of the Islamic world, you'll be, it's mind boggling of the potential. The halal food industry is something which is thriving, which is moving very fast, which is now we claim that Malaysia has been the hub, the hub of it, the center of it, literally the initiator of it. Uh, that has been the cause for many other countries wanting to adopt it, wanting to be in on the act. That's one. Number two, Islamic banking and Islamic finance. I claim, or we claim, that it also started here, the initiative, how it became big. And uh, the potential for that too, is so amazing in the sense that even non-Muslim countries are all wanting to be involved in Islamic finance, in Islamic banking. In other words, business opportunities does not recognize 
borders, neither ideology, neither nationality, neither race. Business is business. And if you understand that, you will appreciate that the opportunities are vast. Mm -hmm.